All right. Well, today I wanted to give my perspective on sub-8 theory. This is a theory that's talked about a lot in the space. I figured I would give my perspective being on both sides of the attractiveness coin from my own personal experiences, as well as my experiences with others as well. When I was a fat, balding, sweaty, Cheeto-stained, putrescent sub-5 male, I can say I had virtually zero raw attraction from women. I mean literally zero for a few years. I would get ignored, rejected, get one-word answers. I even got called Shrek and kicked out of a college party once. This led me to lose a bunch of weight over a span of many years by a series of going on long walks, cutting calories, doing a lot of cardio, and eventually getting down to a weight where my facial features and bone structure really started to come through. During this phase of losing the weight, I still had a lot of fat underneath my chin and in my cheeks, causing my face to still appear somewhat bloated. And because of my height being about 6'2 and a half barefoot, I was able to have a somewhat decent dating life. I would use dating apps and have somewhat decent success and had decent success in bars. However, it would really be hit or miss. I would get about three matches a day on Tinder. And maybe every fifth time going out to bars, I would hit it off with a girl and it would lead to a make out or going home with her. During this phase, I was probably a six in looks and a seven in SMB due to my height. I definitely did not get raw sexual attraction from a lot of girls, and I would still get rejected a decent amount, whether on dates or at bars. However, once I got my second hair transplant and really cut down my weight even further, I lost the fat around my chin and cheeks, and my underlying bone structure really started to show. With just one hair transplant, I would only really be able to do like a messy, somewhat comb-over type look. I didn't have enough density to really rock any other hairstyle. Once my second hair transplant really grew in and my hairline was straightened even further, along with getting down to 12% body fat, this is when everything really started to change. Um, I got new pictures. I was still using pictures of me when I was like pretty overweight and balding. And I would get 10 plus matches a day on Tinder and other apps. And I started to see really in real time more, much more genuine raw attraction from women. And once I got the second hair transplant, I was probably a 7 in looks and an 8 in SMV because of my height. This is when I really noticed a vast majority of women that I matched with and approached in bars to show that like real, raw, genuine attraction. It wasn't really until I got down to a low body fat and like really restored my hairline with density that I started to really notice this. So there's a lot of validity, I think, in sub-8 sub theory in that you're definitely more attractive to women and you're definitely treated much, much better in both short-term and long-term relationships. When I was in the middle stages of losing weight, it was like some women liked me, but it was really hit or miss. And I just didn't feel that like real, raw, genuine attraction. Like after I got to a much lower body fat and my bone structure really started to show through, it was like some women liked me, but it was more like, what else do you got? It wasn't really like that raw, raw, physical, genuine attraction. As far as in real life, you see couples all the time where the guy isn't very attractive. You know, you see average looking couples and even below average looking couples all the time. And does it mean that the woman doesn't have true, genuine, raw attraction for that guy? In some cases, yes, I would believe that to be true. She may have settled for that guy for other reasons such as, you know, money social connections, family connections, compatibility, status, all of those may have played a role in her deciding to be with him. In other cases, the women do find them genuinely physically attractive. It's really hard to quantify if women have that raw, genuine attraction for guys that aren't super attractive. One could argue that if she has a kid with a woman, if a woman has a kid with a guy, that she at least at one time was sexually attracted to him. With that being said, would that same woman have more ge raw, genuine physical attraction for a guy like Chris Hemsworth than her husband? I mean, 110%. But the problem is, is there's just not that many guys who are physically attractive that would be considered an eight. So pretty much any woman would choose a guy, all things being equal, who's an eight, who's very attractive, or over you know, a guy who's a five, who's very average looking, you know, a guy who would be considered an eight by women physically would definitely get that raw, genuine physical desire that most men just don't get in say like a bar, a nightclub, 
or on online dating apps. Now, I also think subbeat theory, like it depends on the environment too. So like take like a, um, like like a very popular nightclub in like Las Vegas or Miami. You know, a lot of the women when they're in nightclubs, they they can, they tend to be much more hypergamous. So you know, if they're out in the dance floor, they're really going to be looking for the hottest guys. You know, the tall, very good looking men, and those are the guys that are going to experience that like raw physical attraction from a woman, especially in a nightclub. The same could kind of be said in bars. You know, like especially loud let's take like a loud crowded packed bar in like nashville as an example nashville is a good example you know most women they're not just really looking to just like make out with like any guy any like average guy they're they're gonna tend to like want to make out with you know very attractive men whether that's very tall men or very attractive guys you know especially when their friends are around and their friends are going to be judging them so I, and then also obviously on online dating apps, you know, we've seen the studies that, you know, most women don't find most men attractive on, on online dating apps and women find about 80% of men unattractive. So on online dating apps, that's where I think, you know, sub eight theory really does ring true where, you know, women, because they're using online dating apps and they're getting all these matches and there's a five to one guy to girl ratio on there the the girl is being much much more picky than she would be in real life so you know she really is most of the time looking for guys who are very very attractive so like sub eight theory does apply to you know like i said bars clubs online dating apps and with that being said like there's a lot of above average looking guys who are about a six or a seven in looks who do really well you know attracting women in bars and clubs and do also pretty well on dating online dating apps and there's also you know average looking guys and below average looking guys who you know do find a partner you know do find people to date you know on online dating they may struggle a lot in bars and clubs but it's not always that you have to be an eight to succeed in those environments it's just it gives you a massive advantage but if you're like a six or a seven in looks you can still do really well in bars and clubs where I don't think it applies is like most other environments. So let's just say, you know, you meet threat, you meet like a girl through your social circle and you know, you may be like a guy who's like slightly above average looking or, or average looking and she meets you and you get to know her over time. Um, or let's just say you meet her through like, you know, a, a social club, like maybe you guys both like rock climbing or you both, you both are into playing music, you know, I don't think sub eight theory really applies there because there's other factors that, you know, you can use, you know, to seem a little bit more attractive. Let's just say you're like an average looking guy. You're like, you're a five, but you know, you're a really good musician that might bump you up to about a six and that might be enough to get your foot in the door with, with, with some girls, you know? So I think it really depends on the environment and also depends on, where a girl is at, like in, in terms of her age and maturity level. So like when women are younger and they're, you know, late teens, early twenties, mid twenties, a lot, a lot of, a lot of the women, they're just looking for like the hottest guy. And that's where I think, you know, sub eight theory also kind of comes into play there. But when women get into their late twenties, their thirties, you know, their, their look scale for men tends to drop a little bit more, obviously, cause they're not in their prime anymore. But because, you know, they do start to look at other factors outside of a guy's looks. In conclusion, there's some truth to sub eight theory. There's a lot of truth to sub eight theory. And, and that really attractive guys definitely do get the most raw, genuine attraction from women in short term and long term relationships. But it doesn't necessarily mean that a guy who is, you know, below an eight in looks isn't going to get, you know, raw, genuine physical attraction from a woman. You know, I'd say if you're a guy who's above average looking, let's just say six to seven range, you can definitely still find many women, find some women who will still find you genuinely physically attractive. You know, if you're average looking or below, um, it, it is going to be much, much harder to find a woman that, you know, has that like raw physical, you know, lust, you know, attraction for you. But you can obviously still find a partner. Like I have some friends that are fairly average looking and they were able to find someone for a long-term relationship 
who seem to genuinely like them. So it's not all black and white from my experience. You know, I also know guys who are pretty average looking, below average looking, who massively struggle with dating. I know some guys who are slightly above average that definitely struggle. So like I said, sub eight theory definitely has a lot of truth to it, but I think it's very nuanced and it's very varied. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like, feel free to feel free to comment down below your opinion on sub eight theory and feel free to subscribe until next time. Take care.